Recently, there is a lot of debate about TypeScript and whether it's needed or not. Some people argue that using vanilla JavaScript is better. Why you would ask? Don't worry, I'll explain everything that you need to know. By the end of this video, you will know exactly why TypeScript is useful, what are its downsides, and whether you should use it or not. That being said, let's take a look at what sparked this debate in the first place. It all started with David Heinemeier Hansen, also known as DHH on Tech Twitter. He's a pretty well-known figure, mainly for creating Ruby on Rails. And he created and is maintaining a library called Turbo, which has a decent amount of users. It was written in TypeScript until he recently suddenly announced he would remove it and essentially change it to vanilla JavaScript. In his announcement post, he stated that he never really actually liked working with TypeScript and he would rather prefer normal JavaScript and that TypeScript pretty much just slowed him down. His decision received, let's say, mixed reactions and sparked a heated debate on tech Twitter about TypeScript. So it turns out that even though TypeScript is pretty well established, there are people who prefer vanilla JavaScript or alternatives, which we will check out later in this video. So the question is, is TypeScript maybe not as great as most people think? Let's find out. But before we dive in, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, MightyMelt. It's a really cool dev tool for React. Using a visual interface, you can find exactly what you want to change on your page, make those changes visually, and it will automatically update your code so it's ready to commit. Super easy and time-saving. I personally tried it out myself and I highly recommend it. Definitely check them out, link is down in the description. Now back to the video. For starters, let's take a look at what TypeScript is and why it was created in the first place. Actually, it all goes back to JavaScript, which was born in 1995 when the internet was still young and most websites look like this. Millions of Americans own a personal computer. If you're one of them, you can now glimpse the future with nothing more than a modem, a phone line, and a few dollars a month. Its intended purpose was to make websites more dynamic, more interesting, using small snippets of code or scripts, hence the name. But as the internet blew up and the JavaScript rendering engines in all major browsers got exponentially faster, you could do way more with it, and people started creating increasingly complex and dynamic pages. Suddenly, you had huge code bases in JavaScript. And that led to a lot of unforeseen problems. Because JavaScript was never meant to be used at that scale, and aspects of it, such as dynamic typing, made it really hard to work with, especially on large projects or in large teams. That was exactly the problem that Microsoft was facing in 2010. We were starting to build an editor, which is the editor that was eventually became VS Code. And I got to about 7,000 lines of code, and I got really mad. Having times where I would take a half a day to find a bug, it takes forever to track these things down because you have no type information that a tool like a compiler can use to find these problems before you get to running the code. That's how the TypeScript project was born, and two years later, the first version was released. But what exactly is TypeScript? See, the problem with JavaScript is that it's a not strongly typed language. That doesn't mean that JavaScript doesn't have any types. It has quite a few types, actually. However, you don't have to specify them when creating variables, and you can change them whenever you want. For example, you can create a string variable and in the next line, assign a number to the same variable, no problem. Not having to think about types is great for beginners and for quick development, especially for small scripts as it was intended. But in large code bases, it can lead to countless bugs and those can be really hard to track down. Because these errors only come up during runtime, when the code is executed, not when it's written. Imagine you have a function that expects a number. In JavaScript, if you actually pass it a string, you wouldn't know until the function behaves unexpectedly. With TypeScript, however, you'd get a warning as soon as you type, preventing the error from entering your code base in the first place. But TypeScript is a not a standalone language. It's a superset of JavaScript, kind of like a wrapper around it, or an extension, if you will. It essentially adds type checking and highlights common mistakes that can lead to errors when you run the code, while you're still writing it. However, browsers don't understand TypeScript, so because of that you have to transpile the code back into JavaScript. So that means even though the end result is still vanilla JavaScript, the code is likely way more safe and less prone to errors. But that doesn't mean that the code is bulletproof. And with that being said, let's get into the downsides. Okay, so why is TypeScript maybe not as safe as many people think? First of all, of course, if you use TypeScript, you get some immediate benefits, like highlighting of common mistakes. But to reap all the benefits, you have to use it correctly. If you don't use it correctly, you might get a false sense of security. Let me explain. There are some obvious errors that TypeScript can help you catch, such as when you accidentally try to convert a variable's type or access a key of an object that doesn't exist. 
And that alone can already be really helpful. But what if, let's say, you deal with events and don't know their types, or with API data and you don't know in which shape it comes? An often used shortcut is to use the type of any. That means the variable can be of any type. It's kind of like opting out of the type system because it pretty much just tells TypeScript to ignore it. And there are a lot of people using it if they run into complex problems or if they're just lazy. So if you use any, TypeScript can't catch potential errors and they might come up during runtime. So while yes, you might not have those red squiggly lines in your code, that doesn't mean that the code is perfectly safe. And even if you avoid using any, you can still do mistakes by incorrectly casting types. That means that you're telling TypeScript that you pretty much know, you're sure what the type of a value is, and that TypeScript should just accept that. But if you're wrong and you cast the wrong type, it can cause errors when the code is executed. On the other hand, having type errors in your code doesn't mean that your code won't run. It just means that you maybe used the wrong type or defined it incorrectly. But your code might run perfectly fine. If, for example, TypeScript tells you that you can't do something because a variable might be undefined, but you know that when the code is actually executed, it will always be defined, then yes, technically it is a type error, but it won't affect your page negatively. And that's one of the criticisms. TypeScript is just doing its job, but it doesn't know how likely an error might come up during runtime, because it doesn't have the full context. And fixing those type errors can be really difficult sometimes, for no or little benefit. So the bottom line is, TypeScript can prevent errors, but not always. For that, you have to use it correctly. And on the flip side, if used incorrectly, it can give you a false sense of security. And with that, let's get to the next problem, which is the cost of using TypeScript. There is always a trade-off, and that is time you invest to type your code. If you work on large code bases, and maybe with a large team, it might be worth the additional time you invest. And even if you're working alone, it might be worth it, because you will likely do less mistakes, and it might save more time in the long run. However, in certain cases, the trade-off might not be worth it. And that is, for example, if you're putting together a quick proof of concept or you're just programming for fun, trying things out and you don't care whether your code is free of errors. But that's not all. There are also drawbacks that are not that obvious, actually. The TypeScript that most people are familiar with and that likely you're familiar with looks probably something like this. Specifying a type for a variable or defining the types of the parameters of the function and what type it returns. That's pretty straightforward and helpful, but you can do way more complex things with it. One thing that I noticed came up a lot in the recent discussions is that TypeScript can be a real burden on creators of libraries or maintainers. Because if you're working on a library, there can be really complex type definitions that you have to work with, likely involving generic conditional types and map types. And this is partly where DHH's, that's a mouthful, DHH's reasoning comes from. It can not only be really difficult for the creator and contributors to deal with TypeScript, but also create a barrier for the consumers of that library that want to understand the code and maybe even contribute. So here is an example to show you how complex type definitions can be. Let's say we have a utility function in a library that conditionally picks certain properties from an object based on a condition provided as a generic type. You could argue that this is pretty convoluted and hard to understand for the most users. It makes it safer to work with, but at the same time sacrifices readability and can cost significantly more time for maintainers. If we take a look at the PR mentioned at the beginning of this video, which removed TypeScript from Turbo, you can see how much it simplifies the code in this case, for example. But does it mean it's better? I would argue, no, probably not. Because now it's less safe to work with and you have to remember there are people who depend on that library, who likely want that type safety. And that's the reason why DHH got called out by other big names in the space, such as Rich Harris, the creator of Svelte, a really popular JavaScript framework. He called his move user hostile. Okay, so we learned that JavaScript on its own can be really hard to work with in a professional environment. And that TypeScript solves a lot of its problems, but it comes with its own caveats, its own drawbacks. And for some people, it might just not be the best tool. So are there alternatives? Yes, there are. Let me show you. A somewhat popular alternative is JSDoc. It lets you write type annotations as normal comments in your JavaScript files. These can be picked up by most IDEs to show the types while coding, or you can even generate documentation pages. JSDoc is kind of like a lightweight TypeScript, if you will. In fact, that is actually what Svelte is using for their framework. Another alternative is Flow, which was created and is being used by Facebook or Meta. It's also a static type checker for JavaScript. I'm not 100% sure, but I think Facebook created it because the compile time of TypeScript was just not fast enough for their huge codebase, and they also needed full control over it. 
And here's something you probably didn't know. Your favorite library, React, is using Flow. They don't ship types, and the types you import are actually from Definitely Typed, which is a community-maintained project that provides types for popular JavaScript libraries. But that's a topic for a whole new video. So back to the original question. Should you use TypeScript? Well, now we know it's not as straightforward as many people like to believe. I would argue, in most cases, yeah, it's probably the best option, if you're working with JavaScript in a professional environment. And even if not, even if it's for your own projects, you still might save a lot of time in the long run. But in certain cases, the drawbacks of TypeScript might be not worth it, and you might want to consider an alternative such as JS Doc. But now I'm passing off the question to you. What do you think about TypeScript? Do you like it? Do you prefer vanilla JavaScript? Or do you use JS Doc or any other alternatives? Let me know down in the comments. See you guys in the next one.